right uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining uh, welcome to this mini course on programming with sql uh, so i'm sure some of uh, more attendees will be joining we'll start the lectures today and this is a week long course and this is going to be uh, uh, the lectures are going to be delivered by uh, three students from iit madras uh, anukul devangan Uh, he is a master student here, and uh, he completed bachelor's from uh, Bilai Institute of Technology. And his research interests are in parallel and GPU programming. Uh, Khush Jogi, he is also a master student here. He completed bachelor's from LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology, Ahmedabad, and he also interned at Amazon on the AWS platform. He enjoys coding graph algorithms on Intel GPUs. Uh, Ayush Mall, who is going to be the uh, instructor today, he is uh, he completed his bachelor's from NIT Srinagar and also interned at uh, Jungle Works and Amazon. During internships, he also improved the data analysis capabilities uh, and also reduced the time required for business logic. Um, also achieved 100% test coverage using Java, XML, Dagger, JUnit, and Mocky2. Uh, as part of his MTech project, he works with uh, Intel GPUs. So all these. uh instructors have uh, uh, experience with intel gpus and uh, they are going to i mean we know that sql one api is going to be used not only for intel gpus but also for cpus uh, as well as fpgas so some of that is going to get covered in this course uh, uh, over to you uh, aish thank you sir So is the screen visible? Yes. Uh, and I'm audible, sir. Yes. Yeah. So, so beginning with the course is programming with SQL. It's a mini course which will uh, which will walk through the basics of programming with SQL and also give a motivation to continue your journey with SQL, right? So before before we start with SQL, so what we expect from you all is you should have a basic background of C, C plus plus. If you don't have any basic background of C C plus plus, it's also perfectly fine. But you should you should follow documentation, right? And you should have a passion for learning. This is a must, right? So here is a beautiful quote: Failure is a prerequisite for learning, right? If you don't fail, okay, you 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 will never try to learn, okay. So with this note, we will start our journey with SQL. So before deep diving into introduction to SQL. let me try to motivate you why go with the parallel programming right why there is a need of parallel programming so before jumping into introduction to sql right so this is the right time to uh, have clarity uh, related to parallelism and heterogeneity okay so let me ask you a beautiful question right why parallel? why do i need system to able to execute things in parallel okay so uh, i forgot to mention a few things right so to interact with me you can uh, type in the chat box right to answer the questions or maybe if you have a question, query you can type in the chat box right so uh, so starting with this so why uh, let me ask you a simple question why parallel why do i need uh, uh, why there is a need of parallel parallelism in the system in the cpu right so you can give your views in the chat box currently so why do you think uh, parallelism is needed right so any one of you since currently the number of participants is less you can open your mic and you can speak also anyone okay so no one okay it's it's perfectly fine okay so uh uh in current in current time okay we want uh, our work to be done faster and faster and we want to do much more work with the time right so why parallel uh, uh we have a desire to get more work then so for that either our system should be powerful a single system should be powerful or we should have more worker since we are talking in the respect of parallelism so we are getting with ahead ahead with more workers right and why heterogeneous system why do we need a system with heterogeneous since we have a desire to get more work then by having different types of workers what do i mean if i say different types of workers let's suppose i have 
and different types of workers and all these workers have capabilities have skills and some maybe some uh, in different domains right so let's suppose worker a can do this work efficiently worker b can do this type of work efficiently so depending on that we can assign that type of work to uh, so that our code our program get more efficient right so so this is the need for heterogeneous okay so uh, what do you mean what do i mean by workers over here worker is simply a compute unit or a devices or you can say processing unit right uh, uh, so it can be a cpu it can be a gpu it can be a uh, fgpa asic or ai chip right it can be anything it should be a compute unit that's it right so so uh, before so Uh, perform is better and better change with the time right so in the past uh, in the very early ages of a uh, cpu cpu was a uh, system was just a cpu right now if we say a system it can uh, we can think of many type of devices right but at that time a cpu was just a system right so we kept making the cpus faster and faster over the time right so in the graph we can clearly observe that in this graph we can clearly observe that the number of transi transistors single thread performance and the frequencies kept on increasing with time right but here you can here you can see that uh, by 2006 right there was no room for uh, increasing the frequency for the practical purposes here here what i'm highlighting for practical purposes right so so what happened uh, by this time we have to discuss to get more feel about why do we need parallel programming right so so here you can see that the single thread performance uh, of uh, the graph of single thread performance is slightly flattened with time right it's slightly flattened but the frequency graph of the frequency it's completely flattened right so what we can think from here that uh, the computer industry faced several problems at this point of time by 2006 from 2006 that okay we can't increase the performance of the cpu right performance is directly linked with the frequency okay so we can't increase the frequency so how to tackle with this all these things right so there were majorly three problems which converge right the famous one is the, uh, hit power hit the power wall which was in 2006 okay so around 2006 the computer industries faced three major problems that limited the performance of the cpus okay the first one the first problem was the uh, power power wall which means that increasing the frequency also increase the power consumption and heat dissipation of and heat dissipation of the microprocessor, which could damage the hardware and cause instability. You can also think in a way if your let's suppose smartphone it's get heated, it's get heated. You can feel that okay, the system, uh, uh, the the working of the smartphone, the uh, the computation power of the smartphone get decreases slightly, uh, slightly right, right. So we can think of it uh, it by if we increase the CPU frequency directly. So it will normally if we increase the frequency, it is directly proportional to if we are increasing the power, right? And also if we increase the power, it's it's quite obvious that it will lead to heat dissipation, right? Which can cause hardware failure and uh, and can cause uh, instability. The second problem was the memory wall problem, which direct which means that the CPU could could not access the main memory uh, fast enough to cpu could not access the main memory fast enough to uh, to keep it keep it with the its computation speed we can generally see the uh, speed of the cpu is uh, around some megahertz right frequencies it's some megahertz but the the same for the ram is uh, too much low it's maybe in the gigahertz right so so there is a huge gap between the speed of the cpu and the uh, and how fast can we access the RAM? It's it's there is a huge gap. This gap is fulfilled by uh, some we can say that registers, caches, but still there is a huge gap between uh, between uh, the CPU and the RAM, so that the RAM uh, CPU cannot access the RAM much faster, which it requires to increase the performance. So this became a bottleneck, right? So now ILP world. The third problem was the ILP wall. What is ILP? This is instruction level, instruction level parallelism. Okay, so 
uh, at that time by uh, around 2006 we can see there was no uh, so there was no enough instruction level parallel in the in single threaded performance right so this also became a bottleneck uh, for uh, for the increase in performance of the cpu right so uh, this happened uh, this converged all these problems converged by 2006 but we can observe the graph over here right the frequency graph just get uh, flattened uh, by 2006 and it remained flattened after that but we can see the number of logical cores starting from 17, 1917 it was strictly one right 10 to the power zero zero it was strictly one but as soon as all these problems converge right and we are not able to increase the performance of the cpus right so so uh, since our try to increase the uh, to, since our, our, we were trying to increase the performance of the cpu so increasing the power won't be a good solution for that right so what we think of instead of going with single uh, single core we can go with multiple cores right so with this we can see that uh, uh, so while here the performance of the cpu while here the performance of single thread flattens we can see the uh, parallelism uh, the increase in parallel rises right so with this so with this uh, to achieve better performance we need to think in parallel right so our constraint was earlier that a single core CPU is good for increasing the performance and it promised all that things, but currently uh, this come to a halt. So for now to increase the performance, we have to think in parallel. So so before before we get ahead, we need to know the difference between concurrency and parallelism. Okay. So what is the basic difference between concurrency and parallel? So uh, I will give you the two figures, right? So which one seems to be concurrent and which one is parallel? Any any guess? You can type in the chat box. Oh, the voice is breaking. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't saw the chat box. Sorry for that. Okay. Now for now. Concurrency versus parallel, there is two figures. Which one is concurrent? My first question is which one is concurrent? First one or the second one? Yeah. Uh, we can think of uh, uh, first one being concurrent and second one being parallel, but we can say that on a higher level, both are con concurrent, right? But if we go to a low level, we can strictly say that the first one is concurrent and second one is parallel. Why? I will uh, just clarify in a bit, right? So, okay. So, so what's happening in the first one? First one, we have two queues and one caffeine dispenser. We can uh, say a, a coffee dispenser, right? So, we can think of these two queues of person can be two tasks, right? Which is executed by a single coffee dispenser, right? And in the second one, we can think of two queues as uh, uh, we can think this two queues as two tasks, but we have two coffee dispensers, right? In the first one, what is happening? Uh, uh, either a person from the uh, queue one or the person from the queue two can get get, get ahead and take the coffee, right? Uh, and then the next time, maybe the other one can uh, other person from the team can take ahead the coffee. And uh, similarly, uh, depending on the agreement or whatever they might be following which will be a good scheduling for them, they can take the coffee. But in the second one, it is strictly that uh, the person in the task, uh, in the, the person in the Q1 will take the coffee from the Q2. So this uh, this task one is being executed in parallel with the task two, right? So uh, if a person uh, in task one is getting coffee, is totally dependent to the person which is uh, getting some uh, kind of thing, uh, which is collecting the coffee from the uh, dispenser too. It's totally in parallel, right? It's totally independent and in parallel. But here is a here is a kind of dependency, right? So, uh, uh, so I have a question. Let's suppose there are three independent computations, right? Three independent computations means let's suppose we have computation A, computation B, and computation computation C, right? These three can uh, can be executed uh, any 
any way around like compute a is executed first compute b is, then compute c the results of all the three is independent of how which uh, which com which computation we are executing first right so this means independent computation okay so we can uh, uh, compute this in possibly three manners right first we can compute a then we can compute b then we can compute c right in second one we can compute a portion of b a, por uh, a complete c or after that a portion of a and then portion of b like this or in third one we can compute a compute b and compute c simultaneously okay so uh, so which one is sequential according to you the first one second one or third one i'm waiting for the comments which one is sequential according to you the first one the second one the third one okay so can i execute in the first one can i execute a compute b first and then af after that we can i can compute compute a and compute c is it possible to get the right answer yeah okay why because uh, in the start i have mentioned there are three independent computations right and in the second one a part of a computation is being executed uh, then some part of compute c and some part of compute all these things are executed we can we can execute we can execute all uh, these computation in this manner only because these uh, computations are independent let's suppose there was a dependency between compute a and compute b right compute a is totally dependent on compute b so so for that we have to compute b first whatever be the uh, whatever be the ordering but in that ordering compute b should be completed first and then compute a should be uh, executed right so so in the third example the all three are uh, executed in parallel so first being the sequential second is the concurrent and third one is the parallel okay so let's suppose compute a is uh, dependent on compute b so can we uh, now execute these three in parallel anyone let's suppose compute a is dependent on compute b right now can we uh, can we execute all these three in parallel no right we have to first compute b then we have to compute a good okay so so uh, uh, yeah so so in the upcoming slides we are going to learn how much parallelism we can achieve and what is the better way to think uh, with respect to achieving parallelism right so i have a beautiful question for you let's suppose there are four walls right let's suppose there are four walls and we have to paint all the four walls right a worker takes one day to paint the wall and suppose there is only one worker available so how many days will it take to paint all the four walls exactly it will take four days it's pretty obvious right a uh, same worker will uh, uh, start painting from day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 and at the day 4 all the walls will be finished painting right cool now now my question is slightly changed the question is let's suppose with the same constraint a worker can paint in a one day uh, let's suppose four workers are there now how much days will it take to uh, will it take to paint all the four walls exactly yeah one day because every worker will uh, perform uh, uh, will begin painting simultaneously right so it will be one day now the question seems will get interesting now i have a, i have a constraint at the start right now we have to mix the paint let's suppose before painting the walls i have to mix the paint to get the right shape right so regardless of how many painters we have right our task is to fix the uh, uh, regardless of how many painters we have let's suppose uh, the mixing time takes exactly one day we can't speed up the process we can't speed up the process by adding any amount of workers right so my question is now how much time will it take by a single worker to print all the four walls So my question is how much time will it take uh, a worker to print all the four walls given the constraint that uh, uh, 
a single day will be consumed at the start regardless of how many printers are available okay so the answer is 5 how how i can get the answer as 5 see at the day one the uh, the work for mixing the paint will occur right so day one is fixed for the mix for to mix the paint to get the right shape right but as soon as day one ended right now the the only work left is to paint right to paint all the four walls i have only one worker so uh, so uh, every time to paint a wall it will take one day one day one day one day four times so the total will be five days good right so now questions become interesting from now what if only four worker are available sorry it is written is what if only four worker are available same constraint uh, one day will be spent in mixing the paint to get the right shade now if four workers are available how many days exactly two days will will take right one day to mix the paint and the second day uh, for all the workers to paint the wall right cool now uh, comparing with comparing with this right let's suppose in a what i can say in a sequential manner sequential manner means i have a single thread right we are taking five days to compute right? five days to uh, perform these tasks right so with respect to this how much speed up i have uh, achieved by adding more workers with respect to one worker any idea earlier i was able to perform the work with the help of one worker in 5 days now i have added four more workers or three more workers now i am able to perform the same work in 2 days so how much speed up i i was able to achieve exactly it's 5 by 2 earlier it was taking 5 days now it's taking 2 days i am about 2.5 times faster than previous right so we can what we can do to get a speed up uh, execution before improvement divided by execution after improvement this is a direct formula uh, this is a direct way to get the speed up right and the and the basic one it's intuitive also right the so speed up is 2.5 okay so my next problem is what if eight workers are available how many days will it take to paint the walls can you think it of? See, uh, uh, if we go with the days, we can think of it as a, uh, it can be a non-integer, right? So don't uh, seal it with some, uh, if, if a day is used, don't take it as a whole day, right? If a half of the day is used, you can go with the half also. So if eight workers are available, how much day will it take to uh, paint all the four walls given that one day is needed for mixing the paint to get the right shape exactly uh, a day and a half how one day is uh, left for the it's covered by to mix the right shape and for the now we have to paint four walls we have eight workers so how much day will it take four by eight which is half so a day and a half right now sorry uh, yeah so 1.5 days so what is the speed up i achieved with respect to day one right with respect to uh, uh performing all these tasks with a single person how much uh speed up did i got it's simple uh, time uh, earlier time divided by the current time exactly it's 3.3 the if we have eight workers, uh, the speed is increased by 3.3 times, right? Now, similarly, if we go on increasing the workers, uh, so what? So what we can see? If we, uh, if what if, if 16 workers are available? We can see that uh, similar in the similar way we can compute that it will take only 1.25 days to compute, right? To to finish all the work. So the speed of increase by four times. 
you can see it clearly that as soon as we are increasing the workers we are increasing the workers the speed up is getting increased the speed up in is speed up is getting increased now what if infinite workers are available what if infinite workers are available so what's your answer for this is it a one day or more than that yeah it flattens out what actually happens uh, day one is used for uh, mixing the paint right and as soon as day two starts since there are infinite workers the time it takes tends to zero right so we can see that approx one day okay approx one day so now can somebody tell me that what is the speed up i achieve what is the speed up i achieve if we have infinite workers anyone yeah and it says it's 5 by 1 which is equal to 5 any more answers any more different answers maybe so you are able to calculate the speed up right the speed up is the execution time before improvement divided by execution time after improvement right so earlier we when we have one worker the time it took was 5 days now currently the time is approx 1 day so we can consider it as 1 right so the speed up increased by 5 times okay now my question is now my question is is there any other way of getting speed up more than 5 times given that infinite workers are available anyone you can think it of right is there any possibility of achieving a speed up which is greater than 5 times given that the uh, we have infinite workers see uh, if 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 uh, uh, saurabh says that more than one workers painting one single wall yeah see this is the basic of our questions right what we were saying that earlier uh see uh, wait a second see earlier what was given only one worker uh, uh, at the start one worker takes one day to paint a wall right so it came out to be if one worker uh, went on painting all the walls it will take four days right now what if four workers are available it's pretty simple that think for a bit that there is no constraint of how the worker paint but worker can paint with the same efficiency uh, with the same efficiency uh, all the walls what if two one wall is there and two workers are there they can paint the wall in half the time half of the time if a single worker takes to paint the whole wall right so more than one person can paint the single wall right so my question is can we achieve uh, uh, speed up by five more than five times if infinite workers are available anyone you can give your ideas it may be wrong it's perfectly fine anyone okay so uh, no answers so see we cannot uh, we cannot uh, with this construct we cannot get uh, we cannot get a speed up which is more than 5 times right because of the uh, constraint which is uh, to mix the paint to get the right shade whatever you uh, whatever you can think it of uh, the bottleneck will be the mixing of the paint right no matter what you do it will take one day right so we cannot attain the we cannot achieve speed up more than five times here 
okay so with this we can we uh, i i am ready to state what is amdel's law right amdel's law strictly state that speed up of a task due to parallelization is limited by non parallelizable portion of the task what is what does it mean see to paint the wall it is a parallelization task right but to mix the paint it is non parallelize non parallelizable right so this non parallelizable portion became the bottleneck right if if somehow i can i was able to do this non parallelizable task in parallel okay so we could have achieved more speed up we could have we could have complete all completed all the task uh, in less than a day right so amdel's law strictly state that the speed up of the task due to parallelization is limited by the non parallelizable non parallelizable portion of the task right so so does it becomes a bottleneck yeah it become the bottleneck the non parallelizable portion became the bottleneck in our scenario uh, even if painting becomes infinitely fast right with unlimited painters the renovation can't be completed in less than the time it takes to mix the paint because mixing the paint became the uh, became the bottleneck of the uh, process right so how can we achieve more parallelization since there since in our code in real world we have much more uh, unparallelizable code uh, so how can we uh, parallelize those also or we are not able to parallelize so we have a bottleneck with this right so we can think it of the we can think uh, amdel's law in a new way right what can we think see uh amdel's law is strictly stated that because of parallelization right due to parallelization it is limited by non parallelization portion of the task right so what we can do it over here we can speed up right since our problem size was four was four days right can't we increase the problem size to the number of processes we can increase the problem size right it's not always the case that we are going to paint the four walls we can think of this law to increase the speed up as if we are scaling we are scaling the problem not fixing the problem size right we are scaling the problem not fixing the problem size so with this i'm again back to the same question now what if 40000 walls are there right what if 40000 walls are there and for and for one worker how much day will it take to how much day will it take to paint all the 40000 walls answer in the chat box please exactly 40000 exactly so for a one worker it will take exactly the same time to make the shade if we are going with that constraint and 40000 days to paint all the 40000 walls right cool now what if 40000 workers are available how much time will it take exactly it will take two days right on the day one we will mix the paint on day two every 40000 work workers will paint all all the walls right all the sign walls so now my question 3 is oh sorry speed up so, okay so we can see that now the speed up is uh, is increased tremendously earlier the speed up the speed the speed up of was 5x we we were not able to uh, increase the speed up now we can strictly strictly see that the speed up is way larger than 5x right so to uh, to achieve parallelism we have to think in a different way right we have to increase the problem size not we have to fix the problem size and increase the number of processes right so in that way it will become a bottleneck to get to achieve the speed up but if we have if we if we are free to increase the problem size that's perfect that's perfect for the parallelization right so now my uh, so there is a design question for you right uh the slide opening is taking a little bit time uh, uh it's like maybe heavy wait a second uh oh, oh, sorry
you can see the bottleneck of the CPU. System got. Uh, yeah. So my design question is: If we are painting a wall, what would we rather use? We can go with a few rollers. Few roller means a uh, point at the end, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe, right? Or we can use uh, a large number of small brushes. What we can think it of? Which is a good way to uh, approach this question? If we want to paint a single wall, right? So what should I use? Should I use a roller? Should I use a small brushes? Brushes can be uh, uh, can be maybe five, twelve, or more than that. So which is a better way to think it of? Ujwal says roller. Okay. So anyone else? Okay, so please don't go with this uh, with the size of the ruler over here, right? Uh, for the for the pictorial representation, since I have to include many brushes, so I uh, reduce the size of the brushes. What I mean with the very powerful and very much less uh, much many much with less powerful, it means that let's suppose we are plugging a field, right? We have two strong oxen, and we have thousands of uh, chickens over there, right? So which which would be a better option to plug the field? Now you can think it of two strong oxen or a thousands of chickens to plug the field. Exactly chickens, and which is more efficient? If we go with the chicken or chickens, if or oxen, which is more efficient? Exactly. Now my third question is: Will these two oxen will take like less time, or these chickens? So I want to repeat my question: To plug a field, the time taken by these oxen are less, or the time taken by these thousands of chickens? If these thousand of chickens are less, we can add more and more and more and more. Exactly, the chickens will take much much less uh, time, and also they have to do a little bit of a work. They have to do a little bit of a work uh, uh, compared to a strong oxen, right? So they have too much load on their arms, right? So we can go with the chickens. Similarly, if we want to paint a uh, uh, a wall. If we have a very powerful, let's suppose we have a very powerful CPU, and we have a GPU with which with which has many threads, right? And it had to perform. Uh, it have to let's suppose do a single task. Let's suppose process an image, right? Process an image, and we have to do some kinds of filters and stuff, right? So a CPU is uh, is much efficient, or we can say that a uh, a GPU which has many threads. Okay, so. Uh, if we think intuitively, then we can assign uh, the pixels to the uh, threads, and uh, and they can be it. It can be done in parallel, right? But uh, for the CPU, it have to as soon as the pixel density of the image increases, the CPU will take more time to uh, uh, work work upon all these things. Okay. So with this, a uh, 512 or 1004 or 2048. Or even more brushes are better, better, right? So what we think that uh, having a multi-core or mu multiple threads are way better than uh, having a single core, right? So, so with this, I have a problem for you to solve it, right? Solve it uh, live over here. So the problem is that let a program have forty percent of its code enhanced to run two point three times faster. We have a Program, forty percent of code can be parallel, can be uh, efficiently run, can be run two times faster than the rest of the code. So, what is the overall speed up if we 
speed up this 40% of its code by 2.3 times. So the uh, uh, the the formula for speed up is execution time before improvement divided by execution time after improvement. So can you solve it for me? With this uh, with this formula, I want you to think how to get the exact execute exact speed up. I can also provide the formula, but it will restrict you from thinking. Okay. So it's a given a program. Uh, Let's suppose the program uh, has 40% of code which can be enhanced by uh, to run by 2.3 times faster. So, what speed up can I achieve? Anyone? If you are not able to calculate, it's perfectly fine. No issue. Sure. But give it a think. I will wait for a minute. And then we can proceed. One answer is Tony James. Uh, uh, one answer is given by Tony James, which is 1.29. Any other? Any other answers? I like variety of answers. Any other answers? Okay, let me change my question, right? Uh, let me change my question a little bit. Will the speed up will be greater than one or uh, the speed up will decrease? Speed up will be one according to uh, Prasanna, according to Aditya, it will be greater than one. Okay, any other answers? Anyone with less than one? You can raise your hand, maybe. So let me state the problem statement much more efficient. The problem statement is let's suppose I have a program, right? Which take t times to execute, uh, which take some time to execute, right? Now, I have a different architecture. I have a different maybe CPU hardware, right? Now I want to execute the same program on this hardware. But after observing the hardware, I got to know that okay, 40% of the code can be speeded up by 2.3 times. Okay, so now this uh, the time taken on the hardware one will be greater than hardware 2 or not will there will be a speed up or not a speed up means greater than one if there is no speed up it will be equal to one if 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 on the hardware 2 it okay there will be if on the hardware 2 let's suppose the, the time taken to execute that process may increase then the speed up will be less than one so according to you all guys uh, uh tony james gave me an answer 1.9 exactly uh, according to Prasanna, speed up will be 1. According to Aditya, it will be greater than 1, but don't know what the exact value is. And Soumya Deep, it's 1.3. Maybe he has just uh, rounded off. Maybe. Uh, and according to Saurabh, there will be a speed up, means which is will be greater than 1. Okay, so let me calculate it for you, right? So let's suppose, uh, let P represent the fraction of the code which is parallelizable, right? P be the fraction of the code which is parallelizable, which is 0.4. Exactly, right? So execution time will be time taken by parallelizable code into fraction of parallelizable instructions. Plus, I'm just talking about execution time. I'm not talking about execution time before improvement, after improvement, right? I'm just thinking of it that there is a program, right? It has two parts. One is parallelizable part, one is non-parallelizable part, right? So what is the time? Time taken by the parallelizable code to execute into fraction of the parallelizable instructions, right? Plus time taken by non-parallelizable code into fraction of non-parallelizable instructions. For the case one, so I want to know that am I audible now? 
ओके फाइन सो द एक्सिक्यूशन टाइम इज टाइम टेकन बाय द पैरालिजिबल कोड इनटू फ्रैक्शन ऑफ पैरालिजिबल इंस्ट्रक्शन प्लस टाइम टेकन बाय नॉन पैरालिजिबल कोड इनटू फ्रैक्शन ऑफ नॉन पैरालिजिबल इंस्ट्रक्शन इट्स प्रेडिक्ट क्लियर राइट सो फॉर द एक्सिक्यूशन टाइम बिफोर इंप्रूवमेंट ओके फॉर द एक्सिक्यूशन टाइम बिफोर इंप्रूवमेंट व्हाट व्हाट विल बी द आंसर लेट्स सपोज अ फ्रैक्शन इज p into t लेट्स सपोज ईच इंस्ट्रक्शन टेक t टाइम्स राइट सो p is which represent a par parallelizable fraction and t represent a time plus 1 minus p what is 1 minus p over here what is 1 minus p over here anyone what does 1 minus p represent is p the parallelizable part yeah so adding summing up the uh, time taken by the non parallelizable part and the parallelizable part will give me the execution time before improvement since in the hardware one where there was no speed up the time taken by the parallelizable part and the non parallelizable part is equal so i am representing it by d and t exactly okay now execution time after improvement it's pretty obvious p into t p represents the time taken by the parallelizable part and 1 minus p time taken by the non parallelizable part now what what i have uh, speeded up which part i have speeded up the parallelizable part so the time taken by the parallelizable part will decrease yes will decrease by what my main question is it will decrease by what the time taken by the parallelizable part yeah exactly it will decrease by 2.3 which is s let's suppose s represent here 2.3 right so after calculating this uh, let uh, after calculating this if we substitute the value of 0.4 the uh, the upper part becomes t and the lower part will be some kind of equation right so we can cancel the t straight away so after putting the value of p and s we can get it equal to 1.292 right so is this problem clear okay so what if my question change to let's suppose we have a program we have a three set of uh, uh, let's suppose i have a okay let's suppose i have a program right and i have let's suppose three types of different workers right and a cpu three types of three types of different workers we can say the gpu right they all perform some operations which are efficient to them right so let's suppose 0.3 uh, 0.3 of let's suppose 30% of the code is parallelizable and, and it can achieve a speed up of let's suppose x and it's the best speed up uh, according to the uh, let's suppose gpu1 right and similarly for let's suppose 20% of the is parallelizable with respect to cpu2 which is the best parallelization right so if we have let's suppose three code blocks and each code blocks uh, we can attain a different speed up so can now i can calculate the what is the overall speed up if we have given the fraction of code which is which can be speeded up in different gpus yes exactly what we have to do just we have to calculate the uh, the upper will be the same the the numerator will be the same the denominator will be the fraction into time divided by the speed up of that gpu then again the fraction divided by the speed up fraction divided by the speed up if we have n gpu we can do it with n okay so this can this can be think it of in uh, in with respect we can generalize this with respect to n gpu right so with this with this uh, note what all you have to do to increase the performance think parallel think cycle why i am saying think cycle because here we get opportunity to deal with various heterogeneous systems right various heterogeneous systems uh, unlike the other cuda and uh, different uh, parallel programming uh, models in that we are just restricted we are just restricted to use one kind of gpus right so think parallel think cycle so now i will take a 10 minute break okay you can also just uh, have a snack for a bit and now we will uh, after that we will start with the introduction to cycle right good cool.
yeah we will start at exactly 4 right so please be back by that time we'll be back by 4 
Okay, so before starting, uh, do you all have laptops with you or maybe a PC? If you have, it's good, but if you don't have, if it, if it is possible, please get one. Since I am, I will be going to set up the second environment for you. So it may be helpful. But anyways, the video will be, uh, sir, could you repeat? Okay, which question uh, exactly? Exactly which question? Uh, you, you asked, did you have, do you have something? I, I missed the okay. last. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So if you have a laptop, it's good, okay. it's good right? Okay. So yeah, yeah. In, in this second half, uh, we will going to set up the SQL environment on a dev cloud, right? So it uh, if you have a laptop, you can just go with the flow. But if you don't have currently, uh, the video will be available after the lecture. Okay. So it's perfectly fine. So waiting for a minute and then let's start. Okay, so let's start with it. Okay, so now before going ahead, I want to just uh, go with a basic. Exactly. Yeah. Now, after discussing the uh, how can we achieve parallelism if we have multiple threads of code, right? Uh, first of all, can uh, some of you, any one of you confirm that my voice is audible? Audible, I wish. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, so uh, after this, after having a discussion on how can we achieve parallelism, right? So we can think it of right earlier. What we uh, earlier what things were uh, what we were doing? We were just uh, making the CPU faster and faster and faster, but a time came where it hit the power wall. We cannot uh, uh, provide much more power due to obvious reasons, right? And uh, and uh, there can be a issue of heat dissipation because if you increase the power, the amount of heat it will release, it also increases. So we have to take all these things in consideration. So for that, because of that, the frequency curve got flattened, right? But somehow, we are the users. We need every time we need a faster GPU, a faster processor. Every time we go to the market to purchase some purchase some kind of device, maybe it can be a smartphone or a, a tab tablet or a maybe a laptop or a PC. We always try to get a better, but which can work more faster, more faster, right? uh the la the laptop maybe you bought five years ago would be efficient at that time would be a, a good deal at that time but having that laptop currently maybe the speed got uh maybe it is much slower with the current laptop we have right so for that for that we can't increase the power voltage over there but we can increase the number of cores in a cpu right so with this and the ability to have some parallelizable code increase the performance allowed us to increase the performance right so with this we can think it of if we have multiple cores we can increase the power by not increasing the power we can increase the performance by not increasing the power but by log by increasing the number of logical cores right so now with this i can uh, uh, start with the uh, sickle thing parallel thing sickle Okay, so let me start the slide. Cool. Okay, think parallel, think cycle. Why I uh, this, uh, no. 
thing parallel is basic but why i added thing sickle because it give a uh, sickle give us a uh, number of heterogeneous workers to work with okay which is not in the case with other uh, programming models parallel programming models so that why i say uh, think parallel think sickle okay so what is sickle sickle is basically a single source high level standard c++ programming model that can target a range of heterogeneous platforms it's a big definition it has multiple uh, uh, keywords okay so let's get ahead and uh, go with each one of them right so uh, if i say what is a single source right so what does it mean if i say a uh, sickle is single source what does it exactly means uh, see uh, uh in other if you have uh, worked on coda or maybe open cl in that you can you can clearly see that if we write some uh, code right write some code which is which which will run on host and some code which will run on the cpu on on the device it can be gpu it can be fdpa or some any other thing okay so we have to write those code differently those codes are very specific to the gpu and the cpu part code is very specific to the cpu right so we can't do that okay uh, we wrote the code uh, with respect to cpu and we are running on the gpu no we can't do that in uh, other programming uh, mo programming models but in sickle we are allowed to do that we have uh, sickle is designed to be a single source meaning that both the host and the device code contains the same source file contains the same source file this greatly Im amplifies the development process think it of if you are uh, if you are just uh, uh, writing a single file where which it contains the host code which will run on the host and the device code which will exec which will get executed on a device code how easy will it become to manage all that right with respect if i say how easy will it become to manage all that uh, i will touch upon more points which will clarify all these things right so the second thing is template and lambda functions okay sickl allows to def uh, allow developer to uh, define kernels what is kernel kernel is basic uh, is it's it's basically a function kernel if i say a kernel it's basically a function which can be executed in parallel by many threads if i say a kernel kernel is basically a function which can be executed in parallel by the threads right so sickl allows developer to define kernels right as lambda functions or functors uh, inside a main application what is the main application uh, since sickl uh, sickl uses a uh, standard c++ programming model so if we think with a uh, this, we, with respect to c++ uh, there is a int main function right we can directly write a device code over there right but in other programming model we, we are not allowed to do that if we are adding a host uh, device code maybe a dpu code so it should be defined uh, uh, outside of main function so sickl allows developer to define kernels which can which uh, kernels as lambda functions on functors right uh, if you have background of c++ it's a very basic to implement all these things right compile time integrations see uh, since since the uh, since sickle has a single source nature means the host code and the uh, device code is written on the same on the same program on the same file and uh, with the other constructs what happens if we go to compile it right it it uh, if there is an issue in the code it will generally raise the issue in the compile time integration but what happens in uh, other constructs is that uh, all the compile time issues we are not able to get all the compile time issues for that we have to uh, if there is an issue it can pop up in the runtime so to, to to debug that it will take much more time as compared to sickl what sickl does since sickl is deeply integrated with c++ and c++ is the is the part where we write a host code so so what is that uh, it helps to catch the issues uh, at the compile time whether it is in the uh, whether it, it is in the host side or is it is in the device side right so it helps us to catch the many of the issues at the uh, compile time which saves much more time as compared to other programming uh, constraints constructs okay portability the main part of all these things is the portability what do you what do i mean by portability let's suppose uh, let's suppose uh, 
in CUDA, right? If I write a program with respect to, if I am writing the program, we are, I am writing with respect to a particular GPU, right? I'm just saying the, I'm just saying the, okay, what is the features of this GPU? And after that, I'm writing the code. If I, uh, if I execute this code on a different GPU, it may run into error, right? But what happens with SQL? It clearly abstracts the underlying hardware. We don't need to worry about the hardware. It's just, we have to maintain that, uh, we have to just write a code once and we can run anywhere. Maybe uh, on the CPU also. If, 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 let's suppose I write a code, right? Write a code for, uh, I write a host code and a kernel code, right? And I don't have any uh, GPU to test. What I can do, I can just exactly, I can run the whole program on the CPU itself. Okay, so it, it uh, what the best part of the SQL is, it abstracts the underlying hardware, whether it is a GPA, is a GPU, is it a CPU itself, right? So it abstracts all these things. So, so, so it's become very easy to make it portable, right? We can just use this code, uh, use this code anywhere else also. Now, integration with C++. See, SQL is, uh, SQL, leverages modern C++ features like its libraries. If you are familiar with C++, uh, you can learn SQL in a bit, right? You can learn SQL very fast because all the things which you uh, SQL use, it, it came from C++. It uses uh, C++ libraries or classes, exceptions, and all these things, right? Templates. So it's a, it's a, it has a good integration with C++. So before getting ahead, let me show you a basic code of SQL, right? So you can see, if you're familiar with uh, C++, you can clearly see that at the start, we just include some libraries which are needed in the program, right? And after that, we uh, start with the int main, okay? So you can see here uh, the host code. The host code, which will always run on the host. And who is the host? Generally, it, wait a second. Someone wants to join the call. Cool. Yeah. So, so this is a SQL basic example of SQL code. Here we are including some library libraries. It's a basic C plus plus code, right? So, it, this is the host code and the device code is marked as as red and the the host code is marked as blue. So, what is happening over here? The host code always executes in the host. So generally host is a CPU, right? Generally host is a CPU. And the device code is uh, always execute on the device, on the device uh, which we targeted on. I am going to explain all these things in a bit, but think for a bit, uh, I have a host, I have a device. The host part will be executed in the host and in parallel the device uh, after the CPU, after the CPU hits this particular line, uh, this will be executed in the device code. And after that, the host code will again, uh, will be executed, right? Since I'm talking about the code, it will be uh, executed in sequential order. And then the device code can be executed in parallel if we have done in parallel, if we have written the code in parallel. And after that, again, it will follow the sequential path, right? So I have a sing single source code, right? Now I want to go and run this code. So you can see with the diagram. Uh, so the host code will be run natively on GPU, right? And as soon as it submits the, uh, let's suppose it do some kind of work which assign a work which assign the work to the GPUs, right? Let's suppose there is a concept we can uh, okay we can just give the work to them and it will assign the work to the GPU. Let's suppose we have that, right? So as soon as the regular code hit the uh, hit the, that assignment part, it will assign the code to some kind of queue. Maybe we will discuss it later, but think of it. There is a queue and we are assigning some work and it will assign that work to the uh, view which we targeted on, right? And it will run in parallel. Here, it can be a CPU also, right? If we don't have any GPUs available, it can also pick up the CPU and execute this. Maybe the parallelism will be less but yeah, it can execute on CPU, right? So this is the basic SQL code. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, why use SQL? Okay. So, uh, as I have gone through in the previous slide, see if 
if you know C++, right? Okay, so the chances of learning uh, the it will be very easy to go with C++, right? Because it uses all the programming concepts. You don't need to use any pragmas, which pragmas uh, at the beginning of the line. Okay, it totally removes all these things, and you have to just if you know C++, you have to learn a little bit, and you are you will do it in SQL two, right? Okay, so I guess that motivation is enough for this. But let me read out why use SQL. See, SQL allows allows you to leverage the performance and efficiency of heterogeneous CPU, right? In this, we can target the work to that particular GPU, and if a GPU is good in work A, I will assign the work A to it, right? It's totally up to us, right? So it helps us to leverage the performance and energy efficiency of that particular heterogeneous system, right? So and in secondary, SQL lets you to write portable and maintainable code that can run multiple platforms and devices. Exactly. Let's suppose uh, in a uh, let's suppose uh, I'm writing a program, okay, where we can target on multiple GPUs at the same time and multiple uh, multiple GPUs or we can say multiple devices. Not strictly being GPU devices, it can be anything. It can be a CPU, it can be a GPU, it can be a FGPA, it can be a AIC, it can be AI chip also, right? So, so on a single on, on a sing, in a single program, we can we can just target multiple devices and assign some work to it, and it's very easy to maintain code because we don't have to deal with multiple. Uh, maybe if I say it's portable, means I can just test it on the CPU also. If I say maintainable, I don't need that heterogeneous system to be present to uh, check the code, right? And with the help of CPU, we can easily uh, debug that code, right? Now, CPU uh, SQL supports modern C++ features. This is the best part of the uh, SQL. It, we can use uh, STL also, uh, STL libraries, templates, lambdas, classes, exceptions, or all these things, right? And SQL integrates well with existing C++ libraries and frameworks. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you about something uh, which is main components of SQL. Well, main components of SQL. See, uh, this is just a very basic level overview of SQL. In the upcoming classes, we will deep dive into each of them. Uh, okay, so you have a greater and broader idea of what exactly all these things are right so now i'm just going to explain the component which uh which is very basic and which is needed to understand the working of sql right so what uh so uh first component is a device a device is just a basic hardware unit it can be a cpu gpu fgpa we have discussed it multiple times right a uh, device is very basic a device is something which uh, which can execute functions or we can say which can execute kernels. What is a kernel? Kernel is a function. Kernel is a function which can kernel is a function which can execute in parallel parallel threads. Okay. Okay. So okay, yeah, I have defined it. Uh, a kernel is a function that is executed in parallel by multiple work items. Here you can think of work items as a thread, right? Thread on a device, right? Uh, kernels can be defined using lambda function. We have discussed this earlier. Kernel can be defined by the lambda function. If we want to write a function, uh, if we want to write something, uh, uh, if we want to assign some work, some work means give uh, maybe to execute a particular function, we can write a, as a lambda function and we can assign to a particular uh, device, right? Work item. What is a work item? Work item is just a thread, just a thread within a kernel. Work item is just a thread within a kernel, right? And if we group some uh, some of the threads, right? Some of these threads, so we can say it uh, collectively call it a work groups. Work groups. Work groups are synchronized. What do you? What do I mean by synchronized? Let's suppose I have a function which have three lines, right? Which have three lines to in uh, input, three uh, three lines to execute, right? And now I have ten threads to execute. Every thread is executing each of these lines, right? Every thread is executing each of these lines in parallel. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean by synchronization? Let's suppose these five threads are in a single group, okay? So all these threads, all these five threads, 
will uh, execute this uh, instruction simultaneously let's suppose uh, if thread 1 executes the line 1 right so that thread 2 will execute thread 2 will also execute the line 1 in parallel it can't be like that thread 1 executed thread 2 didn't execute it right if it's in a single uh, common work uh, group so all these uh, all these uh, what I can say, all these uh, instructions will be executed in parallel, right? Okay. So, Q. Basically, Q uh, is an object that manages submission of kernels. Let's suppose I want to, I want to, uh, I have, I wrote the function, I wrote a kernel, right? Now I want to assign this work to a particular, uh, particular, uh, particular device. So. So how can I how can I assign that uh, work to that uh, particular device? We can use simply a queue, right? Uh, at the starting of queue, we just uh, assign it. Okay, this queue is for this for this particular uh, device, and then we can submit the uh, works which will be executed in the uh, device, right? Now, what is the buffer? You can think as you can think buffer as a common memory location, common memory location, right? If I add something in a buffer, right? And buffer is also associated with a device. Okay. Buffer is associated with a particular device and a host, right? So what happens over here? If I want to access some of the data in the device also. So what I do, I create a buffer. I, I just provide the data in that buffer, right? And then now I can access in the that data in the kernel, in the device memory, right? Let's suppose I have to just, uh, what I have to do, I have to increment and uh, let's suppose I have an array of 1024 elements and I want to increment each of the elements, right? So I want to do it in parallel. So what what will I do? I will just create a buffer. I will just in, uh, I will just give the input to the buffer as uh, th this whole array. Now I will go into the kernel area. I will just, uh, I will just, make an access from that buffer right of the whole array and i can parallelly increment it by one okay so that's the area of buffer and also if a buffer is being modified in the host area or, or the device area right it will reflect on the other part if it is uh initial if it if it is modified in the device area so it will be reflected on the host if it is modified in the host it will be uh, reflected in the device right now, accessor. Okay, now, see what happens uh, when we create a buffer, when we create a buffer and provide some kind of data to it, which I want to access in the uh, device, right? So, to access in the device, I create an accessor over here, right? In the, within the kernel, I create an accessor over there. What do I mean by accessor? Accessor just defines that defines the uh, accessor defines the access mode. First of all, it provides the access of the buffer data, right? The first thing of the accessor is to provide the buffer data, right? Now, uh, which kind of access do I want? Do I want a read or write or both read and write? Okay. Why I am talking about read, write, access mode? We can think it later. Uh, but I can give a small, very small idea over here. What happens is actually, let's suppose. I have an array, huh? which data is to be written in a kernel one, and this data is used is to be used afterwards, right? In a different kernel, in in a different device, right? So what is happening over here? I am writing the data in the in the kernel one, and I am using in the data in the kernel two. So I want some kind of dependency over here, right? So for that, for that it for that the accessor gives an option of specify the access mode if the access mode is read in the kernel means we are not going to manipulate the data of, of in the buffer right so so we can uh, so we can access this uh, data this buffer simultaneously by many uh, devices but if the access mode is right means i am going to manipulate right and the kernel will be defined afterwards needs the updated data so uh, the signal works in a way that if it is right 
as uh, uh, it cannot uh, uh, the other kernel cannot read the data until this kernel is finished right it automatically provides a dependency over here okay you are writing the data and the other one wants to read you first write the data and then afterward it will read it will happen in the order which is specified right if the read is before then read will happen if the write is before write will happen then after read and write can happen okay so this is the main component of this is all the basic six component of the sql which i will be going to use now only okay you don't have to worry how i uh, how the code is being specified it's just a walk through of how can we uh, write the code and check it if it is working or not right so uh if you have your okay sorry 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 uh, uh pratmesh has a question sorry i haven't gone through that okay so what is a heterogeneous platform means right heterogeneous platform directly means that uh, uh let's suppose uh, i want to execute things right let's suppose i have a nvidia gpu i have an fgpa i have another cpu which is connected directly okay so on which uh, we can perform the same task on all these platforms right but all these platforms are different nvidia gpus work way different from the amd one right and the cpu is totally different from all both these things right so heterogeneous in this sense means that there are many computing units but they are different in each terms qualcomm or the sickle compiler can be independent of the see what do you mean by qualcomm compiler okay okay your question start from the do the platform has to support sickle for example mobile phone support open cl for jgpus right do support for sickle has to be supported by qualcomm or the sickle compiler can be independent okay so what happens over there there is not a direct uh, support for all the means let's suppose if i talk about uh, nvidia gpus right so for to configure these nvidia gpus to access all these gpus we have a coda coda programming framework right to directly have an access on that but if we if if we want uh, to work on amd gpus amd has its own uh, its own framework right so what the sickle is doing sickle is being a uh, sickle is a newer topic right what what it's trying to do is uh, currently the libraries are being uh, made support uh, since sickle is newer with respect to all the gpus uh, okay and it's a newer topic so these support is being uh, added day by uh, added with the years right so current so currently what we are just uh, into it like if we are writing a program on sickle whatever uh, hardware it supports right depending on the backend right whatever hardware it supports it will execute on that uh, it it can execute on that particular hardware right but for now for now for android mobile phone support open cl for their gpus right so uh, so we uh, this intel uh, backend has open cl so it can possibly support that i can't assure you that uh, it will support because it totally depends on the backend right so i will just share a link with you uh, uh, in the google groups okay so there you can you can find that okay with respect to backend what actually happens over there what all platforms it can support right currently it's we have a restrictions on that because uh, a much of work has not been done but a lot of work has been done so we are learning about sickle over here okay cool currently uh, it's not widely supported but with the time it will uh, it's probably obvious that we will have a support for all the gpus right and also we are working on that as a mtech project okay so okay so an access we have gone through this okay so if you have a laptop you can just open it we are going to just uh, uh, set up the dev cloud okay uh, let me copy this link and paste in the chat box 
if you are able to wait a second uh, okay don't go, go don't go don't go over here okay uh, i will follow on the laptop you can just uh, type it over there right i will just share this link you can just uh, open this link uh, if you are able to follow you, you can just uh, comment it yes okay so that i can have a note on it if you are not uh, uh, following on the laptop if you just want to see how things work it's also perfectly fine right if you are following then you can just uh, allow me for a minute okay so first of all if you if you have any uh, id on the deploy it's it's very good but if you don't have you have to uh, you have to get a uh, free access on this okay so currently i have a id so i will sign in but you can get the free access uh, you have to just uh, input uh, some of the basic questions right you have to provide a email id over here and uh, they will ask you some basic questions okay why do you need this uh, in which organization do you currently work and all these things right if you have a one pay intel one pay account it's perfectly good okay just go to that link which i have shared and uh, hit a sign in so i will sign in with my credentials so this lecture is solely solely uh, uh, going to explain you how this code works obviously i am not going to explain each and every term over there but i can explain as much i can because things will be come uh, uh, uh will be seen in the future lectures right so okay sorry 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 i have skipped a step okay so 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 as soon as you log in you will you can see this page right intel dev cloud for one api if you are following then you can see it if you are making account do one thing this video will be provided right uh, within an hour after the lecture ends so you can follow from that if you don't have an account if you do if you do have account it's perfectly fine right so what you have to do you have to just scroll down see there are multiple toolkits one api base you can just you are you are free to go to the training modules these are one of the best training modules right i have also gone through this and this really helped us to grow right so so for us to uh, uh, to use this uh, jupiter lab so we have to just launch the jupiter lab it will open in the next window since i am using it currently so i am just clearing the workspace and for you it will just uh, open some kind of uh, tabs over here right you are free to close all the tabs right perfectly fine now this is the basic screen you will be getting over here right so what you have to do first of all you have to go to the terminal and fire some commands so okay so let me check what current uh, gpus or maybe the cpus are available right for that we have to type sickle ls i am typing over here sickle ls right whatever whatever is whatever is available it will just throw it it it's saying it we have a cpu we have a cpu which is open cl and it has some kind of uh, xeon go 6108 this is the processor right and we have some fdp emulation uh, fdpa device available right we have two fdp devices available okay so this gave me the uh, the available devices currently available devices right so what i have to do is uh, you can just maybe create a folder or just right click and create a new file right i'm just going to uh, execute a program which you can uh, see it over here and after the class if you want to uh, to practice it you can practice practice it easily over there right you can click it uh, you can create a new file and name it as something.cpp right so i have created over here already 
since this not is a this is not exactly a programming class so i'm just explaining the all the constructs how it uses how it used and in the further classes we will just deep dive into e, e, we will deep dive into each and everything right so now let's suppose for now let's suppose i've created a sql over here uh, a cpp point over here right so uh, i have a pre written code over here so what happens in this code right don't uh, don't worry about okay there is a buffer there is a queue and there is some kind of some accessor all on these things i have explained each, each and everything to you right there is a buffer buffer what does it take what what is the work of the buffer it just takes the data and provide data to the device that's it that's the work of the buffer okay what is a kernel kernel is just a function okay it's just kind of a modified function it, you can think it of a function which can be executed in parallel by many threads right what is a device the device uh, is something which on which we will run the device code right what is the host host is a cpu which is available to run the host code and the host code is always executed in parallel right these are the basic constructs okay and rest is c++ rest is all c++ okay so don't worry to uh, don't uh, don't forget to include this uh, sql.hpp this is the main file which need to be included right so now what i am trying to do in this code right i have a three variable right int a b and r right i created a queue created a queue what this queue will return it will return a queue huh? it will return a queue and it will select a default device Default device which is available current. Currently, I have the devices. Uh, currently, I have these devices which are available. It will pick up the device and and uh, if I submit a work to it, it will submit to work to that device and it it will start execute right. So now I have two integers int a and int b right. Now I uh, I created three buffers for int a, int b, and so i created three buffer for a for b and for r so what i want to do is i want to just add these two numbers in the gpu in the device which is provided and i want the output in r right so i created three buffers buffer a buffer b buffer c right now in the default queue i am submitting some kind of handler some kind of handler we will discuss later don't worry about it just think of it this is a this is a syntax we have to follow for now we will get in, uh, get add into it later but think for a bit i am working uh, i am submitting a uh, work to the default queue right and this work is handled by some kind of handler right handler defines okay this kind of work we have to execute what kind of work we will execute we will worry about it later okay so now now i have a question right if i have to add a number a to b and store it to c okay so 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 do i need a right access on a and b exactly we don't need a right access see uh, what generally people do, do is they just uh, they have a level of abstraction okay so for uh, for very it's very easy to write a sequential code right it's pretty obvious that code will follow this this flow right as soon as we enter the world of parallel programming okay so things start things start happens in parallel and now it's very hard to maintain that code okay so what people do is current uh, is they directly regardless of what they are doing they write this write only write only maybe read write write only and all these things this is totally uh, this is totally creating it uh, if if there is a no need of write and you are using write it will add some kind of sequen sequential sequentiality to the code right and it will of course reduce the performance so add read only add read write only only when you are manipulating that data else just read only right that's it that's perfect okay so so what i have done here i have created a buffer for all the trees in the work where i am submitting the work right i have taken the access of all these three variables 
since i want to just read the values of b i use this read only right since i want to write the value to r i am just accessing as write only right we can also access as read write only if we want to read the value of r then maybe writing the value to r okay so there are three accesses one to r read and one r write okay now now uh, it's a main thing over here now what work i have to do i am assigning over here right in this area when i whenever i submit we just write some code okay which kind kind of data i want to access okay i have written that code now what kind of work i want to do now can i add a plus b in parallel think as addition as a uh, we can't parallelize addition right think for a bit if i want to add simple two integers should i go uh, should this uh, be need should i need to uh, allocate uh, multiple threads to perform this or a single thread is enough for that yeah single thread is enough right because there are two numbers and adding a two numbers is pretty much uh, uh, it can be handled by a single thread okay so for that i am i am i am saying to the handler take a single task and inside a single task i am just adding uh, since you can think it as uh, an array or a vector and uh, the at the location one it has the values uh, of a and in the uh, accb at the location 0 it has the value of b right now i have stored in a c c r 0 right now i applied dot wait since this is a lambda function okay it will uh, the what what will happen here default queue will submit this code to the uh, that particular kernel as soon as kernel is available as soon as kernel is available it's not like that the kernel is free to work right what happens let's suppose you have a pretty much long code right and you are using the device uh, you are using the device so you are submitting multiple kernels right there can be a case that in the queue there are multiple kernels waiting to be get executed right so so for that what happens over here it just submits in the queue no that's it now the rest will be taken care as soon as the device will be freed up then uh, device will be freed up it will start executing this kernel right and uh, and as soon as this uh, happens it will wait for the it. it will wait for it right and as soon as this work is done perform this work is performed by the kernel this exact this single task work is performed by the kernel right uh, the code the the host code will start will will get executed the host code will uh, get executed since what i mentioned at the start what is a buffer buffer will just take the uh, what buffer will do it take the data which should be accessed at both at the gpu at the device end and at the host end okay if someone modifies it the other can see so as soon as this parallel code will end the host can see the updated value and you can print it over here and you can see it here right now now since adding a two number is very a uh, basic task right it, why should i use the uh, why do i just call for a G, uh, device and then this okay just add two numbers and give me what's the point of uh, calling a device okay so think for a bit if we have a maybe a matrix maybe an array of size maybe range to 10 to the power 5 right and i want to do it in o of 1 so is it possible to doing o of 1 if we have a size see o of 1 means not exactly the uh, 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 with respect to what we think in about uh, uh, sequential programs we look you why an extra wait a second why an extra block scope is introduced Oh, you can you can just remove it. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. There is no need of any block for so it's just like I was just deleting something at the start. Maybe an if statement, right? So I just left it. It's perfectly fine, right? Okay. So so now I I'm going with the respect of time complexity. Actually, what is happening? See, 
if i if i want to add a single number right uh, add a couple of numbers maybe a and b so how much time compressor will it take think with respect to a cpu think with respect to a cpu how much time compressor will it take o of something what okay wait a second uh uh do you have a knowledge of uh, big o notations and all if someone doesn't have it's perfectly fine you can comment it if you don't have any knowledge of okay it's perfectly it's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine okay so now i got the idea why you are saying no right okay so see what i am saying that if i have a cpu right i have to add two numbers let's suppose it take one unit of time to add two number right okay now i want to add these two uh, i have an array of size 2 i have two arrays of size 2 size 2 namely a and b now i want to add the two numbers now how much time will it take maybe approx double the if i have to add a single two numbers right so what if i have to add n numbers and i have a cpu oh sorry 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 i am not writing on any board okay let me write over here right? okay okay see okay. let's suppose right i have two numbers to add let's suppose i have two numbers to add okay so how much operation will it take i can just think it of uh, if i remove all the uh, constraint i can think it of one operation is enough to add two numbers right now now i have to add two arrays of size 2 right now i have to add two arrays of size 2 there are two arrays and i have to add two arrays of size 2 the i have to add corresponding numbers uh, of the arrays and store into a different array right so how much operation will it take it will take two operations full right now now i have to add two arrays of size n right now how many operations will it take n operations full now this n can be of a range of 10 to power 6 operations right let's suppose it can be a range of 10 to power 6 operations so there will be a considerable difference between adding this or adding this will there be a considerable amount of time difference between adding n operations where n is of the range 10 to power 6 if we execute this in a cpu note the time right and if execute this in a cpu you can note the time so there will be a huge time difference or a just a pretty much yeah 10 to power 6 will take much more time right with respect to one operation or two operation right so now now the main question is i am doing exactly the same thing right but i have n threads to do this can the above time will be comparable with this n threads if we take this time into account of course there will be some overhead on assigning the data to the device code right assigning the data to the device code and launching the function and it will be queued let's suppose this take negligible time right now to add this will it take a uh, uh, comparable will, will it be compared to the first or second operation yes it will be directly comparable so you can see that how much time is being reduced over here right how much time we save by just add a uh, addition of two arrays right so what happens over here we have just complex gpus uh, which you can see that the animations over there at the back end what happens there are many matrix multiplication which is uh, happening in parallel many vector additions happening in parallel and it's that super fast that it just does in a bit right so you can see that animations more smoothly okay 
also there are many constraints of other that uh, the uh, the device uh, the monitor should be that uh, fast also there are other much more constraint but if we think with respect to a gpu gpu it can just parse all these things in a bit right so so my my now my main question is if i want to add an array of to, uh, to add two arrays corresponding positions of two arrays and store in a third array okay and i have to uh, allow this uh, now i have to add this to the buffer corresponding buffers and now i'm getting the read and read only access to the a and b and write and write only access to the r now see, will the cgs this handler will pro, uh, will guide for a single task to add an array of n elements or it should be different from a single task okay let's suppose let's suppose i have an array a b and r right and i want to add with respect to a single task means a single thread is being instantiated with the work to be computed now i want to add two arrays right if we have a single task if we have a single task right so to add all these things we need a for loop for from int something i zero i less than something n whatever i plus plus right and we are adding this and we are adding this right so is this a good way to do this we can do this thing on the cpu itself right and i guess cpu will perform this faster if i do the same thing over here do you agree with me any more yes yep so see see what handler is doing it assigning a single task to the uh, to the gpu single task means only one thread will take care of all the work which is inside the single task but somehow i want to admit it okay but somehow i want more parallelism okay so i got to know that i have to do different from a single task right there should be something which allows us to assign and threads and at that point we can just remove this for loop do you agree with me there should be some kind of uh, 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 some kind of maybe a keyword which allows me to uh, uh, re replace it with a single task and can it be uh, uh, and it it may allow me to provide and such and threads and each thread will perform a single operation and which and it will make a uh, and it will be make uh, these things more parallelizable with respect to the earlier one yeah there is a concept right and david david it's not a parallel task and this is the homework for you all right so what should i write in place of exactly in this area to make this code work right so this is a homework for you to take an array of size whatever you want right and uh, and create one more uh, array size this is just a homework to make sure that okay you are involved in the course or not you have to go to the web and just check it for, okay what exactly uh, should be the uh, what should be the exactly syntax for having in, in the buffer range right have to create a buffer for an array you have to just just uh, hit on the web and just check it okay if it if it for if i am doing the same thing for integer it's like that if what if i am providing an array so what should be the syntax the whole work is similar but the syntax is just a pretty much different but the whole work of the buffer is similar right so what you have to do you have to create an array right create an array uh, three arrays okay assign some of the random integers to it maybe whatever you want maybe the index number let's suppose see right and you created a two, right to you created three buffers right and you took uh, in access or in the kernel you took access in the kernel now you have to figure it out what i have to write over here it's pretty obvious that single task will be not there and some kind of parallel stuff will be there right 
and it will also give some kind of thread number right and it will give some kind of thread number i don't know anything but it will give some kind of thread number which i will use as an index over here right and which will perform this task smoothly right and you have to output all these numbers over here so is this task achievable as a homework okay i want you to do this because you have to just go and just uh, go through all this you will learn how to debug things if you run into an error right now for now what i will do i will just tell you how to execute this right how to execute this currently i don't have any gpus available right so let me first execute this on a G, uh, cpu then i will just go ahead with a uh, gpu right so for that uh, i am i have the terminal over here let me clear it okay uh, see currently this hello.cpp is in the nsm folder and i have to just redirect or redirect over there so what i did ad nsm this is the basic of uh, terminals right you should know all these things right now i have this hello.cpp in over here i can ls it says hello.cpp cool now now what i have to do over here is uh, i have to compile this hello.cpp so to compile this you have to write it uh, this command icpx hyphen f sickle then the name of the file hello dot sorry hello dot cpp and the output and the object and the name of the object file right which is let's suppose i give it hello dot out right uh, i will provide this in the chat box see depending on the internet availability it may take some time okay if the internet fire it will do it pretty quick so you got this hello dot out right so to execute this executable file you have to just write hello dot out that's it the sum is 42 is it right answer or wrong let me check it out i don't remember the values of a and b currently a is 18 b is 24 right it's perfectly right right okay now 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 can i check what is the gpu is it using is this okay now i want exactly which of this is being used okay so i have a command for that let me just bring it over here i just don't learn all these things Okay. we can name it as q we can name it as q don't worry i will provide this code right now again i have to compile it somehow to check what is going here let me clear the screen and okay i have to execute this code again it's it's compiled successfully now i have to execute this hello dot out it is given and okay yeah you can see this you can see this uh, the selected device is xeon gold it's a cpu since we haven't defined any uh, uh, what we are going to allocate and the device memory allocated is this much of right okay so now what i am going to do is i am just trying to uh, check if a gpu is available and i have to target on that gpu right so for that uh, i have a command for that why i am copying paste pasting this you will know in a bit when you will do at your own space so actually what happens you can read the text in the command uh, in the chat box it's q sub hyphen is it a small l or a capital i I'm just, I always get con con confused with that. So I just do one thing. I just copy and paste this, right? 
many times i just ran into error okay so what is the it did just uh, check what devices are available on the dev cloud okay and if there is an availability it will just assign a uh, uh, device to us right now if we do sql ls we can see that we have ultra hd graphics right intel's ultra hd graphics yeah first one is capital if okay if you just copy this text you can just see in a different font you can just differentiate between all these things right but i saved in a place which have the font capital i similar to a small l right so i was just confused with that okay now 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 i am going to execute that now one thing which is needed uh, is needed to be noted first i executed this code on device right i didn't mention anywhere which device i am going to use what i am going to use whatever is available i am just using that only right it's totally independent of what device i'm using it's totally independent of that okay uh, the code is not seeing okay which device is available so i have to write this type of code with respect to that device i am not taking under consideration all of these things right now i am going to execute this hello dot out okay uh, currently i am just out of that folder cd and sm now i will execute hello dot out okay so you can see that sum is zero right this is because wait a second uh, uh sorry uh, this is because we are not uh, i can just do one thing straight away and this will work what can i do over here yeah. here you can use report set over here Now I have to again compile it. I have changed some code. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's hello dot cdb, not try dot cdb. Sorry for the mistake. All these things you learn with the code. The more you code, the more you learn all these things. It's taking much time to evaluate, but it's done. Where it is, you can see that the hello dot is modified seconds ago. Means it's com got compiled. Hello dot out. Right. The answer is zero. Why? Why it's not reading from the memory? Uh, uh, Okay, 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 okay. Maybe I have the solution over here. Okay, so what's happening over here? So as soon as I just do a bit of thing over here, I need to copy the. Uh, I need to just uh, make refresh this buffer so that whatever is performed over here should visible over here, right? So. I have to add a couple of a uh, single line over there. So what you can do it? Okay, just it's not a pretty much big thing. So what what I what why earlier it was working? Let me explain it. Okay, earlier the CPU was the host and itself host is the CPU, right? So what's happening? We were just uh, creating a buffer, creating a all the three, and we are submitting to the queue, submitting to the queue, and queue is uh, queue is. Uh, and this task we executed in the kernel on the device here the device is itself the cpu so it is reading that uh, so the the memory is common to both the devices because both the devices are same 
so they were just adding it and just simply uh, as soon as the ad is performed uh, it's just uh, doing see out uh, and it was totally showing up now what the case i have changed the device to the gpu to the gpu so what is happening we have created a buffer we have created a buffer we are just in the gpu's buffer right in the gpu's buffer we are just adding this right we are just adding it and now i am trying to access the value r this r is perfectly in the buffer which is in the uh, sorry uh, which is in the host side right so since host side is not being edited so it's still showing zero right so i can also debug it but it will take a couple of minutes me to do it out but i want you to do this as a homework i will provide this as a this code on the google groups so find me that exact line which is needed if i use the gpu and also the second part of the homework is me take and couple of arrays add it and write in the third array and print the sum if you are getting the right sum means you are on the right path right but from the next class we will be deep diving into what buffers are how actually it works behind the scenes what actually accesses are right what is uh, what is how can do parallel things since this is homework it's good if you do but we will touch upon in the next class that uh, related to parallel things what we can do how we can achieve more and more parallels right so with this uh, uh, i am ending this uh, session and it's i guess it's 5 okay so thank you for being there and i hope you like this session and in the some parts of the notes regarding to the cycle yeah i will share on the uh, bullet line copy buffer that from device code yeah yeah uh, we have to add up that particular code over here right so i will provide all these uh, this lecture and uh, and notes which you can refer from to get a better understanding right since in the in a week we can't uh, get we can't explore whole of the sql right but we can help you in being comfortable with the sql so that you can get ahead with the sql in the future if you want right so we are just ending this session thank you for being there and i hope you will attend the session tomorrow also and also please make sure that if you have registered with a given uh, gmail id you use that particular gmail id to uh, to access in the future lectures also right if you are using a different uh, uh, gmail id then you won't be entitled for the certification right and you have to present all the six days cool okay so let's end up this thank you for being there stop recording